All right, let's look at section 4.5.2, the modified Gram-Schmidt algorithm for computing the QR factoring of a matrix. So we've talked about how to use a QR factoring uh, to solve a linear system of equations AX equals B. You write that as sequence of two um, linear systems that you can solve. But how do you compute uh, QR factoring? Well, some of you have been taught the Gram-Schmidt uh, method. And in section 4.5.1, we showed in the text, which I haven't talked about in the video, uh, section 4.5.1 demonstrates that Gram-Schmidt is numerically unstable, does not produce an orthogonal matrix Q or unitary matrix Q if the matrix A is complex. Modified Gram-Schmidt is better. It's still not perfect. It still doesn't produce as orthogonal a matrix as we would like numerically, and we'll see that householder transformations are actually better, and that's the way MATLAB actually does it. But modified Gram-Schmidt is worth looking at for a couple of reasons. One is that it's practice in thinking about matrix multiplication in a couple of different ways. So we'll begin with that. So what we're going to do is we're going to partition the matrix A into columns. So A1, A2, etc. They look like scalars, but they're not. Each of these A subscript J's is in fact a whole column vector. So the matrix A has been partitioned in columns. And likewise, we're going to partition the orthogonal matrix Q. I'll say orthogonal or unitary, and I'm just going to pretend that I know uh, which one it is. Uh, unitary for preference. But anyway, Q is normally seen for orthogonal matrices, so the real matrices. Anyway, we have columns of Q. Q1 is going to be a column like this one. Uh, the matrix A can be uh, M rows by N columns. This factoring works for rectangular matrices. So we partition Q in this way. Now, we do not partition the upper triangular matrix into columns. We explicitly uh, partition it into the first column and the first row. So we're just going to have one scalar there. The rest of the first row is going to be up there. And then the rest of the matrix is going to be another upper triangular matrix, which is one dimension smaller. So I'm going to show you that QR can be interpreted in this uh, column partition manner uh, in the following way. So it's a little bit easier to see if I actually write uh, QR directly in front there. So let's just uh, put the Q in. Q1, Q2, do, 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 up to Qn. So this matrix times this matrix. What we're going to use here is the interpretation of a matrix times a column as a linear combination of the columns. So this matrix times this column will give the first column of QR. Well, this column times this matrix just gives you R11 times the first one plus 0 times the second one, 0 times the third one plus 0 to, to the end. You might not be familiar with that particular interpretation of matrix multiplication. And one of the reasons that I'm doing this this way is to give you some practice with that. So the very first column of this matrix times this matrix is going to be given by this matrix times the first column. Well, that matrix times that first column is just going to be R11 times Q1. So the first column of the product is R11 times Q1. The second column of the product is going to be this matrix times the second column of R. So we're going to get R12 times Q1 plus R22 times Q2. We get the, this linear combination of these columns. So we have exactly two columns showing up in the uh, second column of the product. Then for the third column, we have R13 times Q1 plus R23 times Q2 plus R33 times Q3 showing up in the third column of the product. And so on all the way to the end where we have R1n times the first one plus all of these numbers times uh, these columns. So this linear combination of these columns plus this times this one gives us our final column of QR. 
since QR must equal A, we must have that R11 times Q1 must equal A1. So we have A1 equals R11 times Q1. The only thing we know about Q1 is that it has magnitude 1. This, the norm of this column must be equal to 1. The two norm of this matrix must be equal to 1. So therefore, R11 has to be enough to get the uh, two norm of, of this. In fact, it's not quite right that I've done uh, this here because we actually want to get a, uh, a sign positivity. We want the real part of R11 to be positive. Um, <coughs> and this will work. Or pardon me, the real part of Q11, the first component of Q11 to be positive. And so this doesn't quite work. Uh, we need a, a sign in here, but this works. We will get a QR factoring. We won't get a unique QR factoring out of this. So if we take R11 to be the magnitude of A1 and define Q1 to be A1 divided by that magnitude, then the magnitude of this uh, vector is going to be exactly 1 because the magnitude of, of this vector is going to be the magnitude of A1 divided by the magnitude of A1, so it's going to be 1. So now we know what Q1 is. That's this whole column in Q. We know the first column of Q. It's just exactly the same as the first column of A1 except normalized, so this norm is 1. And we know the first entry of R. The modified Gram-Schmidt computes all of the rest of these, this first row, first. So we're going to go compute this one, then this one, and all the way up to this one. And we're not going to compute any of these other ones just yet. So what we do is we compute, uh, we look at the second equation, R12Q1 plus R22Q2, and that must be equal to A2. So we have A2 is R12 times Q1 plus R22 times Q2. And we use orthogonality. We want the matrix Q to be orthogonal or unitary. I've actually written with complex conjugate transpose here. We know that the dot product of the first column with the second column must be zero. All right, so let's multiply this whole equation by Q1 uh, transpose, complex conjugate transpose. And we get Q1 uh, H A2 on the left is R12 times Q1 H times Q1 plus R22 times Q1 H times Q2. That is zero by uh, our desires. And so we wind up with uh, exactly, because this is now one, uh, we wind up with Q1HA2 is R12. So we've identified this entry. Similarly, uh, the next column, this thing must equal A3. So we must, again, we just multiply that whole equation by Q1H. And Q1H times this whole equation gives us R13 times Q1H Q1. So that's 1 plus this times 0 plus this times 0 must equal uh, Q1H times A3. So R13 must be Q1H A3 since both of those are zero. And the same idea works for all of these things and we get uh, all of these Rij's by multiplying the original columns by the complex conjugate transpose of Q1 which we worked out in the first step. So once we know what Q1 is we can find out what all of these Rij's are from this one all the way to this one. So that identifies the, the first row. I'm going to pause the video. Actually, I'll stop the video and I'll continue this conversation in the sex second video. Again, you get to see my uh, 